Hi, I'm Michael Josh, your gadget matchmaker, helping you find the right device to match your needs. Welcome to 2021, and as we usher in a new year, brace yourselves for plenty of new smartphones, beginning with this one. And the bar has been set real high. This is our Samsung Galaxy S21 review. Here in the US, the Galaxy S21 launched $200 cheaper than last year's S20. Samsung says this is a result of many factors, including better supply chain scaling and cheaper components. But of course, there are other compromises that have to be made. The S21 has a polycarbonate back instead of glass, it doesn't include a micro SD card slot, and only has a full HD display instead of last year's Quad HD. Should you be bothered by any of this? Well, given its cheaper price tag, definitely not. Last year, Samsung also gave the non-Ultra Note 20 a polycarbonate back, and it was a difference you could feel. That's not the case on the S21. The phone feels solid and every bit like a premium device. The lack of expandable memory isn't that big of an issue either. That said, at least here in the US where models start at 128 gigabytes, I recommend spending that extra $50 to get the 256 gigabyte model, which I believe in most cases around the world is the standard. Finally, the move down to full HD is smart. Why is that you might ask? Well, while the S20 series could go up to Quad HD resolution, if you wanted to enjoy the buttery smooth 120Hz refresh rate, you needed to dial down to Full HD+. If you have a problem with that, then the S21 for you is probably this phone, the Ultra, which I'll be reviewing next. And if you don't want to miss that video, make sure you're subscribed to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it will definitely help us reach our next milestone of a million subscribers. While we have a lot more to get into, what's probably most important about the S21 is its price tag. And it tells us that Samsung is listening and knows that what the market wants and needs is a more affordable phone. And on that topic, the S21 delivers. In every other respect, despite its cheaper price tag, this is just as good as a smartphone as its more pricier siblings, the S21 Plus and S21 Ultra. The S21 Plus starts at $200 more and trades in the polycarbonate back for Gorilla Glass Victus and a larger screen in battery. But everything from its five nanometer processor and triple cameras are the same. As this review video is going out early, I have yet to hear the verdict on the Exynos based model that's available in other parts of the world. I can only speak for my Snapdragon 888 powered S21, which is both powerful and power efficient, capable of everything I've thrown at it, most probably even more. From a purely performance perspective, I have nothing to complain about. I really think Samsung hit a home run this year when it comes to the design of the S21. They have really leaned in to the fact that in 2021, camera humps are going to be large. So they're embracing it. The phone still has three cameras, but with bigger circles and framed with chamfers to make them look bolder and feel more intentional. I love how the frame of the phone and the camera bump are a single piece of aluminum and how they serve as an accent color. It's gold on my Phantom Violet review unit, as well as the Phantom Pink model, silver on the Phantom White S21, and gunmetal gray if you get one in Phantom Black. This year's color selections are great. There's something for everyone, whether you want something more classy or flashy. And regardless of which color you choose, the finish is matte and more smudge resistant. Up front, its display is flat, no longer curvy on both sides like its predecessor. Everywhere is familiar. It's got Samsung's stamp written all over it. But side by side with the S20, whatever changes Samsung's made gives the S21 more sophistication. In the hands, the S21 feels great. It's my favorite size of all the three phones in the series. Slightly bigger than last year's S20, but with the same 6.1 inch display that's big enough for content consumption. 
but its size is still not unwieldy like the S21 Ultra or even the iPhone 12 Pro Max. It's perfect for one-handed use. On paper, the Galaxy S21 has got the same exact cameras as the S20, a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera, a 12 megapixel wide camera, and a 64 megapixel 3X telephoto lens. But something you should know about smartphone cameras is that hardware is only half the story. Take, for example, Sony, whose image sensors are in many top smartphones, but whose own Xperia smartphones don't take photos that are as good. Or Google, which has used the same hardware for three or more years now on its Pixel phones. Still some of the best in the biz. The other important factor is hard to quantify. Think of it as machine learning, the AI algorithms that work behind the scenes to turn a good photo into a great one. Samsung says this is where they made improvements. But the proof is in the pudding. So we compared the S20 versus the S21, as well as the iPhone 12 for good measure. Let me sum up my findings here. The S20 was already a good camera and the differences between the two will require some nitpicking, which is also my job, so indulge me. Versus the S20, the S21 produces more vibrant photos favoring the yellower side of the color spectrum. More often than not, they have deeper contrast, but sometimes at the expense of shadow detail. It's not necessarily the most color accurate, that goes to the iPhone 12, but oftentimes the S21 delivers more pop and is more upload worthy. Sans any retouching. Or as they say in the song La Vie en Rose, voila, le portrait sans retouche. Content creators will also love the new video features on the S21. First, all of its cameras can shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second and 8K at 24 FPS. And while you're shooting 8K video, you can also shoot high resolution stills by pressing the shutter button. Director's view lets you film with both the front and rear cameras at the same time and gives you a live video preview of all three cameras, making it easier to compose your shots and easily switch between them while filming. Finally, stabilization has been improved too, so I filmed this quick montage so that you get a better feel of how the S21 performs. Roll clip. In the week that we test drove the Galaxy S21, it lasted us a full day of average use with 5G turned on. To get the most accurate picture of battery life, I made sure to test on days that I was outdoors running errands so that I wasn't just on Wi-Fi, but also accessing the internet on cellular. Following Apple's lead, Samsung isn't including a charger in the box, but they say the phone supports up to 25 watt wired charging using Samsung's 25 watt charger, the one that came with last year's phone. I got 20% from a 10 minute charge, 56% in half an hour, and 93% in an hour. A full charge took about one hour and 20. The phone also supports 15 watt wireless charging and reverse wireless charging so that you can charge accessories like the new Galaxy Buds Pro or another phone if you're in a pinch. So is the Galaxy S21 your gadget match? As the first major smartphone launched in 2021, Samsung really set the bar high with this phone. It delivers where it matters, and even better yet, is more affordable. For me, that's a win-win. With its $800 asking price, it's still a pricey phone, but worth it given all that it offers. And while we have yet to see what's coming from its competitors, Samsung was smart to launch early because there's really nothing to complain about. So if you're in the market for a new smartphone, don't wait. Just go for it. The S21 comes with a gadget match seal of approval. While I have yet to use the S21 Plus and we'll talk about the S21 Ultra next, it's pretty clear that for most users, the S21 is the phone you should buy. 
TLDR, go for the S21 Plus only if you want that bigger display and longer battery life. Go for the S21 Ultra if you want all the latest bells and whistles, including its new cameras and S Pen support. Upgrade now if you need it. Wait if you're curious about what's coming next. February will bring a lot of surprises. And that was our Samsung Galaxy S21 review. For more videos like this one, including more content on Samsung's S21 series, make sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel and hit that bell icon so that you get notified as soon as we upload. Follow me on social media for all the behind the scenes fun stuff, including sample photos. And as always, make gadgetmatch.com your daily habit. Until the next video, I'm Michael Josh. Thanks for dropping by.